should and need to happen. Uh, one, we need to look at regulations or what's really going on so you can look at having some kind of uh, limits on the amount and the types of pollution that's taking place. Secondly, let's just say that's a given. Now, what do we do? I mean, the, the facility is there, it's done what it's gonna do, it's probably still doing it, uh, but what can I do? And I think that's where the whole place around carbon sequestration comes in. Uh, that's one, that's not the only solution, that's one uh, potential response to what we see here. And now, how do we manage carbon? And how do we do it in a consistent manner? Because, you know, the world is full of smart people. And because the world is full of smart people, uh, everyone comes up with things that benefit their perspective or their ideal. But it doesn't really address the issue entirely. What it does, it address their agenda. And uh, to give you an example, it, you know, if I come up with a way to capture carbon, it's going to be to benefit what I'm uh, interested in uh, or I get paid. But let's just say that if we brought all of those entities together and say, why don't we come up with a standard and a consistent way for how we calculate carbon? Because this is a growing area. It's a trend that's building. It's going to continue to get big. And if we are not engaged in this and learning about this carbon market, we're going to find ourselves playing catch up and we're going to find ourselves responding to issues rather than being, uh, you know, solution oriented to these issues. And what I mean by that is, let's just say that some entities develop a cap and trade system for carbon. Well, how do we, how do we plan a cap and trade system? Uh, what's the rules? What's the standard? But we have to create that. What are those policies around forestry? What are those policies around agriculture? What are those policies around peatland? What are the policies that's really important? And it's the dirty work, but that's the foundation of moving forward. And so how do you get interested in forest policy? How do you get interested in environmental policy? How do you get interested in all these things that serve as a foundation and a backbone for change and also for the future? Now, cap and trade system, uh, is it, are you just trading carbon or are you sequestering? That's the first big decision that's gotta be made. Now, in the United States, the federal government, we've already made the decision that we're not gonna trade the carbon. We're gonna capture carbon and we can still utilize and manage the forest in a sustainable way. Because when you go in and you manage that forest, it's much like a garden. You have to cultivate it a bit. Um, there's things happen, so you have to tend to it. Uh, now, a forest is gonna absorb carbon for so long, and it's gonna stop, and it's gonna emit it. And so how do you manage that? What's your civil cultural description for how you manage for carbon? And so that's the other thing that when you look at managing a forest, you manage it by what we call civil cultural prescriptions. Does that prescription identify ways to maximize carbon sequestration? You know, so if you cut a tree and make ferns out of it, it's still captured. Now you plant another tree to absorb more carbon. And that's what I mean by how do you manage for the future and how do you manage for carbon? And we need young people to be thinking about these things now uh, because everything that I'm telling you is going to be outdated when you get to bring that. And so how do you take what's a trend uh, and then how do you move out on it? I'll give you an example. Uh, climate change seems to be a trend right now, a, a legitimate one. Uh, but our scientists in the Forest Service uh, actually want to pull the surprise on climate change over 20 years ago. And that's what I mean by you have to be managing into the future, not for the problem that you have right now. And so as you engage in the environment, you need to know what's going on now, but you also always keep an eye. If I continue to do what I'm doing now, what's likely to happen? If the climate is changing now, how will it likely change? And how do I position my country, my community, whatever, uh, to be prepared? And so we're going to need scientists, we're going to need policy uh, writers, we're going to need legislators, we're going to need some of everybody to address the issues we have, and we have to do it collaboratively. Never forget about engaging the community in these issues that affects them. Uh, 
we have to. It's the only way to go. Um, and so uh, it's the only way to go now. Now, when you get to RIMED, there may be a different way to go. You'll have to decide that, though. But for right now, uh, we have to and we should engage the communities that we serve and the communities that are using these resources that are being affected by these changes and these challenges that we have.